with AMD moving to chiplets, GPUs in RDNA 3, the question becomes not if Nvidia will do the same, but rather when. There are significant cost benefits to using chiplets, but those don't come without complications to the hardware design and potential performance issues. Will Nvidia continue building giant monolithic GPUs, whatever the cost, so that they can retain the performance crown? Will they follow a hybrid approach with some monolithic and some chiplets based? Let's look at Nvidia's recent developments in chiplets and dive into what their future GPUs could look like. Today's video is sponsored by URCDKeys.com. If you buy a retail Windows 10 key, you will probably spend $100 or more. But if you buy an OEM key using a service like URCDKeys, it will cost you less than $15 after you use the coupon code C25. The keys work globally, and if you want Windows 11, what I recommend you do is just buy Windows 10 and get a free upgrade while you can. Personally, I use Windows 10 Pro. Once you've made your purchase using one of the many different payment options available, you will instantly find your key in your purchased orders on the URCDKeys website. Click Get Keys and copy the key. Then after you've installed Windows, of course, press Start and search for Activate and click on Activation Settings. Then click Change Product Key, paste in the key and click Next. That's it. Quick and easy and cheap and your Windows 10 is now activated. If you need Office 2021 professional, you can use the same 25% discount code C25 and get it for just $59.98. Since you're over there, check out the Black Friday sale for some great discounts on peripherals like lightweight gaming mice and controllers and some very affordable 60% mechanical keyboards. Thank you to URCD Keys for sponsoring today's video. Check the links in the video description to get your OEM Windows keys today. To understand where NVIDIA is going with GPU design, we need to look at how they view chiplets versus monolithic. It's not that AMD somehow developed the ability to create chiplets-based GPUs and NVIDIA didn't. At the end of the day, it's simply a business decision on which strategy to use, what makes the most sense economically, and what will deliver the best results without being prohibitively expensive. There are two main reasons to move to chiplets. One is cost, and that is AMD's primary reason for creating RDNA 3 GPUs using chiplets, putting the analog and SRAM logic that doesn't scale with an oat shrink in an older technology chiplet, and putting the cores which do scale in a more advanced technology node, in this case 5 nanometer. The second reason to use chiplets is specialization, and this could be where Nvidia adds to AMD's strategy when it comes to future GPUs. Today's converged GPU design has to cater to a variety of application domains, so in in HPC, you see GPUs with costly high precision arithmetic for FP64, advanced error detection and correction, HPM for massive bandwidth, and fast I.O. like AMD's Infinity Fabric or NVIDIA's NVLink. When it comes to specialization, NVIDIA has added Tensor cores and AMD Matrix cores, and NVIDIA has added RT cores specifically for ray tracing. These are embedded into the GPU. The problem, both in HPC deep learning and in consumer workloads is that if you don't use these capabilities, then you have dark silicon that's just taking up die area and not being utilized. If you don't turn on ray tracing in games, then those hardware blocks are really just taking up die area for no reason. There are diverging requirements that will inevitably force Nvidia to move to chiplets. In HPC, you need FP32 and FP64 for high precision, but in deep learning, things like sparsity are facilitated facilitating low-precision networks. In addition to this, transistor scaling is continuing, but at ever-increasing costs, and the reticle limitations in silicon are restricting transistor and die area growth. A single converged GPU design will stop being feasible very soon. Nvidia's solution to this is to disaggregate the converged GPU, so something like the H100, which is launching now, into several domain-specialized GPUs. But because it's too expensive to make 
make a GPU for each application. The idea is that you have a core GPU platform that you plug accelerator and memory chiplets into. As you can see in this example, NVIDIA is able to reuse the main GPU module in both the low precision deep learning GPU and the high precision HPC one. But the memory resources can scale according to the domain's needs because they are disaggregated from the baseline GPU. This is different from RDNA 3 where the core GPU is actually the element that varies, while the on-package memory varies in how many memory chiplets are included. When you look at NVIDIA's gaming GPUs, not all of them include ray tracing cores for instance, and only the 100 series GPU series is able to do FP64 at full bandwidth. Designing different GPUs for different segments is going to become unsustainable, so this core GPU plus accelerator chiplet is likely the route NVIDIA will take in the next generations. Taping out a GPU in a new process technology is around a $500 million endeavor. A mask set alone is $50 million, so in the future NVIDIA will want to optimize this business problem by creating a baseline GPU which has chiplets around it that can do specialized workloads. So let's say the difference between a future RTX 5060 and a 5060 Ti would be that both share the same baseline GPU, but the 5060 Ti would have a ray tracing chiplet on package. The 5090 could have all the chiplets, but maybe the 5080, which would have the same baseline GPU as the 5090, would only have a few of the chiplets that are in the 5090. Maybe the 5090 Ti has two ray tracing chiplets and so on. I'm saying 5090 could be the 6090 or 7090. A Titan class card could include a scaled up memory system and the ability to do FP64 at full bandwidth, but still have the same baseline GPU as the 5090 Ti. At the moment, NVIDIA prototypes accelerators and adds the ones that work well for a given task to the GPU core. In the future, these will be added as chiplets, and the GPU platform will disaggregate from the accelerators. RT cores will be in their own chiplet, maybe tensor cores as well. So why isn't NVIDIA doing this already? Well, the cost of making monolithic dies is still reasonable, as long as NVIDIA can continue passing the cost down to consumers who so far seem happy to pay for the ever increasing premiums. And in addition to that, the design work that will have to go into a chipless GPU is going to be immense and it's not something Nvidia can bring to market that quickly. Nvidia will want to preserve the existing GPU architecture to minimize design effort and to maximize reuse, so they will want a baseline GPU that can serve multiple markets. This takes time and a lot of human resources. Basically you are designing a GPU that can have a bunch of things plug into it, depending on which market segment it's targeting. It's a huge design challenge. Another challenge in creating such a GPU family will be in moving the burden of high bandwidth communication that's happening on chip to on package wires, which is what AMD has done to apparently some success with RDNA 3. Let's visualize why this is such a challenge. At the moment, we have the streaming multiprocessors in a GPU, each with their L1 caches, a network on chip connects these to the L2 caches. The L2 caches are connected to memory controllers which drive the off-chip DRAM. The problem here is that while the on-chip wiring transports tens of terabytes of memory bandwidth between the SM and the on-chip memory hierarchy, the off-chip DRAM interfaces typically will do less than 3 terabytes per second. While there are several ways to theoretically skin a cat, the only feasible way to disaggregate this is to do the following, to create an additional cache level, L3, and move the memory controllers there. This relies on existing L2 cache bandwidth filtering within the GPU module and provides more than four times higher post L2 bandwidth. This is basically the approach that AMD has chosen for RDNA 3. The advantage here is that for certain applications, the core GPU can forego the L3 cache and just link the GPU directly to DRAM. So for instance, in HPC applications, that would make more sense. But for gaming and deep learning, those L3 cache dies can be included in the package, as those applications can make use of them. The L2 cache serves as the point of coherency in the GPU system, so the L3 doesn't have to be coherent, so no requests are routed to the L3 without first being serviced at the L2 level. One question regarding NVIDIA's implementation will be if it will use a planar design like RDNA 3 or a 3D design. A 2.5D design requires a much larger 
larger interposer and is exponentially more expensive to make than a 3D design. The 3D design, on the other hand, requires a much smaller package, but the base GPU will have to account for ultra-high bandwidth link bonding for inter-die communication. In both cases, the overhead will be between 5% to 6% in die area, depending on which approach is chosen. In practical terms, probably more like 10%. But of course, this is offset by the fact that some designs don't require L3. A good example of this is how AMD's Navi 33, presumably, will be monolithic and forego the L3 cache. One advantage of going with a 3D design is energy efficiency. An ultra-high bandwidth link in a 2.5D package, like in Nardian A3, will consume around 9 watts at 100% peak bandwidth at 0.3 picojoule per bit. AMD claims 0.2 picojoule per bit with the Infinity Fabric. So it's possible that it's less than 9 watts, but should be around that. In a 3D design, the same type of link would consume only 2 watts or less because of the shorter distances and the more efficient link technology. A rough compounding of energy cost would result in a 3D stack GPU being 350% more efficient than a 2.5D GPU like the 7900 XTX. Not every part of the GPU is switched on all the time, so this is a rough estimate. Nevertheless, a 3D stack design has massive energy efficiency benefits compared to a 2.5D design. Another reason why I think Nvidia hasn't moved to chiplets yet is that while the large L3 cache obviously reduces the number of DRAM accesses, it's not large enough yet. The 7900 XTX has 96 megabytes of L3 cache, so depending on the workload, if AMD and Nvidia could include enough L3 cache on package, we could get to a point of reducing DRAM access by 70 or 80 or 90 percent, depending on what resolution you are playing. It takes about four times less energy to fetch a cache line from this L3 memory than going to DRAM. In addition to all the issues already discussed, there are some technological advances that are required to tip the economic and performance scales towards chiplets. Like I said, I suspect RDNA 3's 96 mags of L3 cache are nowhere near enough what Nvidia wants. IBM recently implemented a 960 megabyte cache on a 696 millimeter square die using a 14 nanometer eDRAM technology. eDRAM reaching maturity will be fundamental for an Nvidia shift to chiplets. And I think at the high end, Nvidia will want to have between 1 and 2 gigabytes of L3 cache on package, assuming a reticle limit of 800 millimeters squared or so. 2.5D and 3D interconnects also need to mature for Nvidia to make the move to chiplets. TSMC's SOIC can do more than 1 terabyte per second per millimeter square of interdie bandwidth. Nvidia will be looking for an improvement on that. Technology-wise, I think those are the two main areas that Nvidia will be waiting for maturity, and I don't think we're quite there yet. I think we still have at least one generation of monolithic GPUs coming from Nvidia, with Ada Lovelace transitioning to 3 nanometer, probably with minimal changes, as Nvidia readies an MCM design for the following generation. It's likely that beyond 3 nanometer, the prices of monolithic GPUs at the reticle limit will be too high to compete with AMD's chiplets approach, both in cost and in energy efficiency. So I think at 1 nanometer, Nvidia will introduce a chiplets-based architecture. There's also the looming threat that if AMD keeps filling their pockets with CPU sales, they might go crazy with a huge GPU and take the performance crown. It could be done even in this generation. Such a GPU would probably cost AMD close to $1 billion to tape out on 5 nanometer. So they would need a lot of disposable cash because it's questionable if they would ever see a return on that investment. I say go for it, but let's be real. The likelihood of AMD taping such a huge GPU is very remote, so I don't think Nvidia is feeling too pressured to change the current paradigm. So my expectation is for Lovelace to be a short-lived architecture, probably being replaced in 12 to 18 months with a 3 nanometer port of it. And then following that, I would expect Nvidia to move to chiplets in order to stay competitive on price, performance, and efficiency with AMD. And it's not like Nvidia is new to the MCM GPU design. There was the V100, the A100, and now Hopper. And let's not forget Simba, which was a fully chiplet-based GPU built on an organic substrate. Nvidia already has the know-how and the tools to make chiplet GPUs. They are waiting for the economics of it to make sense. The amount of possible 
L3 cache on package to increase and for 2.5D and 3D interconnects to mature to provide higher bandwidth at lower energy. In addition to that, they will want to build a baseline GPU that can have different types of accelerated chiplets plug into it, and that's going to take years to develop. It's literally only a matter of time though. This video was made possible by my awesome patrons. Consider supporting me on Patreon for just $1 per month and get exclusive access to the Cortex Discord server. Thanks for watching and until the next one.